So we're going to record it and um, admit people as we come in, as they come in. So part of this, um, part of this journey, you know, is everyone seems to have some sort of digital transformation project going on. They either have a project in play or have an initiative to do so from their leadership. Um, and, you know, it's, it can be very complex to, to transition your, um, your business. So, you know, I, I, I've been in this business for 30 some years and I, I've always told people, I'm like, you know, I know IT stands for information technology, but my, my version of that is in transition. I mean, we are always moving people from current state to future state, trying to do it with the least amount of risk. And so that's, that's what we're going to show you today is that we're going to show you how to go from the current state to the future state, which would be Verge OS for a virtualized data center with the least amount of risk and the greatest chance of success. So um, go ahead, Anand, let's move forward to the first one for the first slide. So the idea here is the first section of this presentation is going to be Cloud Fabrics. The second section is going to be Verge IO. So I'm, I'm a big Stephen Covey fan. Now, you know, if you're not familiar with him, he's, he's a very popular writer um, about management books and things like that. But one of his most famous quotes is, seek first to understand. And we, we believe in that wholeheartedly. You have to understand what you have in order to transition it. So our role in this is to be the front end discovery, uh, including being able to map out dependencies and then put it into a actionable plan. We actually do planning, right? We will drive this information into a plan. And what Anand is gonna show you is um, the five steps that we put uh, together to automate and to drive um, effectiveness into the Verge OS um, process. So Anand, if you would take over, that would be great. Absolutely. Thanks, Kerry. So one of the things that, uh, as uh, Kerry was mentioning, is to understand what you have in your environment. So one of the things we do, part of the, a quick proof of concept, is to run discovery in your environment to find out what your assets are, what the configurations are. So we deploy what we call some agentless collectors that uses SNMP API. And in the case of, uh, of uh, Windows environment, we use SSH or WMI to discover that. But what you get out of that is a full stack, almost real time environment on, on your assets that you have. So that can be sent into the CMDB. So you understand what your routers, switches, virtual machines are. And most importantly, what the, the vendor and the OS versions running inside your environment. So these handy reports that we give you allows you to see inside that. But we also give you further insight in terms of dependency mapping. So one of the things that you have is when you have applications deployed on a virtual environment, on servers, on top of uh, network and so on. So you need to understand what traffic patterns are happening within your environment. So for that, we use NetFlow, PCAP, or other APM tools, application performance monitoring tools to discover them from multiple sources. So it's not only from one source, but multiple sources. And you are able to see north south traffic on the infrastructure but also east west traffic so within the the applications within the servers within the virtual machines itself so that's a quick glance into what's happening inside your environment now part of the discovery process is that not only do you get an accurate inventory but you also get what we call a plan of record generation so that tells you if these equipments are standard, has there been an end of life, end of sale announced? Because we do have integrations with uh, vendors like Cisco, VMware, but we also maintain a end of life, end of sale dictionary that allows us to say for all the vendors that we support, is it 
is it in current generation or is there been any sort of vulnerability already announced on the software or on the hardware side? And this comes from collecting the data, but also interacting from the vendors and getting the data out of their environment. So such as P-certs, any end of life, end of sale announcement and things like that. And the third step is to provide you with optimization. So not only do we see what is deployed, but also underutilize assets. And that's extremely common on the networking side, on the virtualization side, where you do have equipment that are deployed, but are underutilized. And that's something you want to be able to recognize quickly and get a handle on it. So either for data center consolidation or to get better insights in terms of what is getting utilized or not. Part of the integration with vendors is also to see which uh, contracts, support contracts are covering the assets. So that gives you insight into when it comes to renewal, do I want to renew this for uh, older generation hardware or not? Or do I extend it? So you, you get a better understanding of which assets are covered by support contracts or not. And these are all out of the box reports that we are talking about. So within a three weeks proof of concept, we can collect the data and give you these insights very quickly. And then also recommendations. So this is a recommendations, I mean, all the reports will give you ideas, but this is also recommendations in terms of how do you want to rationalize your consolidation or replacement strategy for replacement of hardware, upgrades in terms of software, and looking forward, what would be the rate of change if you plan to implement at a large scale, for example, replacement of hardware and software. Ideally, you want to be in your entire environment in a current state where based on what you have seen, what you have approved in terms of compliance and recommendation, that's what you need to be able to see in your environment. So to me, this is the holy grail, right? This is the planning document that will allow a safe passage into the virtualized data center using Verge OS. So you can, you can map this out, you can go get funding for that, you can get approvals for it, and you will put the schedule in front of leadership that says, here's how we're going to do it. That builds confidence. Um, you know, with, with your leadership or whatever the decision makers are. So anyways. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so that to me, again, is is this this is the outcome that we're all looking for, right? Is how do we do this? We've done the dependency mapping. We've done all of the due diligence up front so that we don't make mistakes going through the virtualization process. So Anand, if you go to the go to the last slide here, so again, you know, any one of these savings or reductions are impressive. You combine them together and it, it's, you know, it's extraordinary what you can actually do by using Verge OS. So um, again, that's, that's our portion of this. We're, again, we're the front end, uh, all the discovery, uh, dependency mapping and planning documents. That's, that's our role in this partnership with, with Verge. So I'm gonna, we're gonna hand this over to the Verge team and Patrick Dooley. Um, take it away, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kerry. Um, and you guys can see why we're using somebody like um, Cloud Fabrics in a partnership like this, just because they bring so much to the table. They bring so much data and so many different entry points to scan customers' environments, figure out what those dependencies look like, and really overall paint a really good picture of you know the whole category of what we're trying to do here of just using more of what you already have trying to utilize something um, that you may be completely underutilized and really just going through and, and trying to get more out of what you got to be honest with you and really that's where kind of we come together with um with cloud fabrics here with verge os and and really try to encompass that whole um whole saying end to end here so now that we're kind of you know jumping into the verge os portion of it the really cool thing about everything that we do with our partnership with Cloud Fabrics is 
it's software defined end to end. Everything that they do is software defined. And then everything that we're going to go through today is going to be all software defined, software driven um, aspects of the data center. So just kind of jumping into exactly what Verge OS is, um, we can go through and, you know, just talk about, you know, how it works is really the main thing is, you know, we use x86 commodity based hardware. Um, it, we can use enterprise grade hardware as well, HP, Lenovo, Dell, whatever you have um, on the floor and whatever you're comfortable using today. Um, we can typically have, uh, if you have hardware already on the floor, we can use that again with the same model that we're bringing to the table today um, and kind of extend that life cycle of that hardware. Um, if it's something that's only a couple of years old, we might be able to get another three to five years out of that just based on what our whole support model is and what we bring to the table as a software defined data center. Um, that kind of eliminates the need for really expensive hardware like a, a VX rail or a Nutanix where they really have to be on a specific model. They have to have these hardware components in it and be able to go through and utilize certain kinds of disks in different um, fashions where we can actually get away from that completely and we have more of a scale out approach um, across the hardware as a whole to make sure that we're using every piece of that hardware um, and utilizing every bit of the power that some of the systems have. Um, when we combine that hardware with Verge OS, which is an operating system that we install on all um, bare metal servers, we have a single license feature that goes through and benefits all of our customers. So no matter if you want to partake in just maybe the virtualization and the storage, um, but later down the road, you want to adopt some of the maybe the backups and encryption and things like that, you don't have to be at a different license level to do that. Uh, day one, everybody gets all the features that we have available in the system. So you don't have to level up to from an advanced to an enterprise, an enterprise to an enterprise plus, um, and so on and so forth, and, and play that whole software matrix game. Um, we actually kind of eliminate that and give you everything and every feature that our operating system has out of the gate. And then anything new that we would go through and develop later on the road, you would get that through updates and lifecycle management. And really, when we go through and we combine these two aspects of, you know, HCI or even a two-layer type of approach, uh, we, we get what we call virtual data centers or um, tenants inside of our system. And with that, you know, we have, we can make virtual private clouds, we can make um, virtual machines, we can have infrastructure as a service, back as a service. We even create DR as a service for some of our customers based on some of the technology that we have in, in the system as a whole. So when we start talking about some of the technology that we have, you know, we have to kind of reimagine the data center and reimagine how we do things over the last couple of decades, because it is truly a little bit different. Uh, we do take some different approaches. We do have um, a whole different threading model built into our system. So there's a lot of naysayers out there at times going, hey, there's no way that you can do that. It, it, it doesn't exist. Um, you guys are completely making this stuff up end to end, which, you know, we're not. We can prove everything that we do and, and typically do it at scale. So when we start talking about like software defined networking, you know, we have that built into the system as a feature. So all of these features that you see in this circle, whether we're talking about the software defined networking aspect, maybe we're talking about the KVM based compute, which is our hypervisor. Uh, we get into uh, software defined storage inside of here where we do some inline deduplication where a lot of our customers are seeing anywhere from like a 4X to like a 24X type of compression model, uh, just because we're only keeping unique data inside of the system. Uh, we have built-in NAS um, that we run inside the system. We have a lot of security features. Our whole platform is inherently built on different security aspects uh, to make sure that everybody that is using the system is, is able to get you know, PCI compliance or HIPAA compliance or some sort of NIST type of um, application um, approval you know, based upon your organization meeting the requirements and the procedures and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a disaster and recovery, uh, disaster recovery and backup type process built into our system. Uh, we have an, a whole automation engine, which we call recipes um, that we have built into this. And we have a little bit of self-healing and um, some machine learning and AI built in as well to make sure that some of those things that are automatic that we can do, uh, pick up and, and do those things um, as quickly and as automated as possible. And that's kind of the, the name of the game here. When we start talking about a software defined data, data center is, how much of it can we automate and how much of it can we make it so it's not hands-on or how many tasks can we go through and do once and kind of set it and forget it type of mentality. And that's the whole approach that we try to, to take inside of our software defined data center aspect as well. And why we give you all these different tools and why we give all these different uh, features inside is because we want a single operating system that has a single kernel, 
single patching and life cycle mechanism through this entire process that's easy to use, single pane of glass, and is automated end to end for a lot of our users. Uh, and then tenancy, tenancy is something that we, we get into a little bit. Um, it's, it's really cool. It's kind of our bread and butter when it comes down to what, um, what software defined data center should really look like is we found a way to actually take all these different bubbles that you see here, the networking, the compute, the storage, the NAS, the security aspect, all the automation, self-healing, and we found a way to containerize that. And what that means is every one of our tenants is a running in some sort of a container with all of these different features built into it. So we've containerized our operating system. So that way we can have a full multi-tenancy approach to a data center. And we can make these data centers portable. Um, we can replicate them from end to end. So let's say you have a customer in Miami and they're in the hurricane path. Well, you can take all of their networking, their firewall rules, their ACLs, their layer two, layer three switching, all the compute and hypervisor rules, any kind of storage that you have set up, any kind of NAS aspects that are set up in there, all of your retention policies, your replication policies, all of your security practices that you've built in. Uh, and we can actually move that entire data center to something that might not be in a hurricane path. Let's say, you know, Detroit, Michigan or Grand Rapids, Michigan, where we typically have a lot less hurricanes or completely no hurricanes. Um, and really what that does is it allows you know, that customer to avoid that complete outage that it would be possible um, if something were to happen to their data center. And we can really start to build in all these different functionalities into um, a data center that typically is a pretty static environment where you would have to replicate and put in um, some sort of hypervisor environment, some sort of switching environment. Um, and you know how you have to build out these really big complex environments that have you know you know physical firewalls, physical switches, and really we we eliminate that and we really streamline that down to just needing the bare basics of an HCI type components and top of rack switching, and our software can go through and you know dive in and control the rest of it end to end. So a couple of different deployment models that we have out there. Uh, we can typically do a HCI type of deployment, which is a set of nodes. Um, typically we start with two, uh, but we can scale up to thousands of nodes. Um, and we actually have uh, two top of rack switches just for redundancies that we would have as a typical installment. Another way that we could go through and kind of slice this up is what we call like a two layer deployment is if you were to go through and have storage nodes dedicated to just storage, and then you would have a compute nodes dedicated to just compute, which we like to see these type of uh, models. And when we have like Oracle type licensing, SQL type licensing, and then we can go through and really dial in some of those TCO uh, conversations around the licensing and, and, and really what you need to do in order to make something that may be bare metal today, um, get it into a virtualized environment on, on just a couple of nodes dedicated to just SQL or Oracle or something along those lines. And that's where we see a lot of those conversations come into play when we start to separate compute and storage. But that's huge because when we start talking about software defined data centers as a whole, this is kind of a new concept. You know, HCI has been around for a long, long time, um, five plus years at this point. And really, it, we're not just now having the conversation of, you know, if I want to buy just storage or just compute in an HCI node, um, that's just not uh, a, a typical uh part of what an HCI concept is. You know, you if you go through and you want to buy a storage heavy node, well, there is going to always be some compute and memory that come along for the ride. And the same thing if you buy a compute and memory heavy node, there's always some storage that has to come around uh, along for the ride. And with that, you know, we've actually found a way to eliminate that completely, where if you want a storage node, you're only going to get licensing and paid for from our side of the house uh, for just the storage side of that. And if you want a compute heavy node, you can go through and put as much memory and uh, processor in those nodes as you want. And then you're only going to be licensed for the compute portion of that. So it's a really, it's, a, it's an interesting way. It's a kind of a new design of, you know, attacking that software defined um, aspect and giving a little bit of a reprieve when it comes down to some of the licensing of not always having to bring uh, compute memory with storage and storage with compute memory. So one big thing about our product is the one system, one license type aspect that we bring to the table is if you were to go through and try to compete in a similar business model that we have, uh, you would need a hypervisor license. You need a networking license. You would need some sort of virtual SAN type license. Um, typically, uh, you have a management license, depending on what type of hypervisor that you're using. 
if it's Hyper-V, it's going to be an SCCM VM type of setup. Um, if it's going to be um, uh, a VMware, it's going to be a vCenter type of license. Um, automation typically does not come in a lot of these HCI or software defined uh, components. So that's something else that you have to buy. And you can see how a lot of these things just start stacking up, not only from a complexity standpoint, but just from a licensing and management standpoint that all of these are all different lifecycle managements. They're all different types of um, panes of glass that you have to go through and do. And then you have to make sure that when you update something that you don't go through and break something else later down the road. Where in a virtual OS system, um, all of these different licenses and all these different pieces of software with other vendors, we have actually put directly into the hypervisor. We've worked with it from the ground up. Uh, again, we've redone threading models. We've gone through and programmed things in a certain way where we use just a lot less code and we're a lot more efficient end to end. Um, but we also have one operating system, one kernel to patch, where on the opposite side here, you might have six plus kernels to go through and patch and, and make sure that those lifecycle managements um, and those patches and those security holes are all updated um, throughout the year, where we actually just make these features inside of our operating system. And we go through and uh, we're able to lifecycle manage end to end because we know what to expect inside of our own piece of software. So some key advantages to using us um, are going to be, you know, we can improve the change management process by going through and creating copies of tenants or cloning tenants and, and allowing a change process to actually happen before it takes place with production data. Um, those are some of the things that when you actually are able to containerize a data center, it's very easy to make a copy of it, which I'll show you inside of the demo that we'll do next. And really what it does is it allows us to streamline some of those change control processes that are out there, test the change, that way we know how to revert back from it or go through and just implement that change right out of the gate because we already know it works after the change control process approval. Uh, we can simplify compliance by having a multi-tenant approach. Um, even if you are a enterprise acting as an MSP, we could go through and have a tenant for IT, you could have a tenant for finance, maybe accounting has their own system. Um, and then we can sort of do a micro segmentation type of approach to your internal IT. Um, we can also get you know, very comprehensive with instant restores. We have integrated DR capabilities. Uh, and the big one, we reduce disparate vendors. So you, know, you typically only need one vendor with us. Uh, we are the vendor end to end. Um, and you don't need to have a backup vendor, a disaster recovery vendor, a, a sand vendor, a hypervisor vendor, a automation vendor, and so on and so forth. We can really go through and just streamline the software process, the lifecycle management, everything end to end with what we bring to the table. So what we'll do now is we'll go through and jump into a quick demo um, and kind of show you guys what the interface looks like. Uh, we'll go over a, a key couple of concepts that we went over, and I'll show you actually what they look like inside of our system, um, and then do a couple of quick restores and maybe clone a, a system or two here just to show you how quick, easy, and adaptable that our system is to any environment. So with us, um, this is kind of the login pane that you end up seeing here. And with this, we can actually authenticate with Google, we can authenticate with AWS, any of the IAM uh, public cloud services. Uh, we can also do Active Directory, LDAP, and um, Okta is another one that we're actually integrating with. Uh, we also have a local authentication side of things here where we can make sure that if you don't have one of those type of authentication engines, uh, that we provide one to you in order to use us right out of the box. Uh, we use Google here, so we'll go through and just log in with a Google account. And that brings you kind of into our main page where we're going to see, you know, a virtual machines tab. Uh, we're going to have a tenant tab, which is going to be that multi-tenancy approach that we've been talking about. Uh, we'll have repositories to store ISO images and different things to build out some of that automation and, and have repositories to do that. Uh, we have um, a full networks tab, and this is part of our software defined network approach where you can have firewalls, VPN concentrators in here. This is where your layer two and layer three type of operations will be held. Uh, we create um, all the VX lands that are needed inside of our system in order to create all these different tenants and things. Uh, then we have sites, clusters, nodes, uh, vSAN tiers. Um, cool thing about our storage outside of the, the inline deduplication for data reduction um, is that we can have multiple tiers of disks. So if you wanted to run NVMe on a couple of nodes, 
if you wanted to run mixed read and write uh, SSDs, and maybe that you have a, a slow spinning tier that have large disks in them. That way you can put your snapshot somewhere and kind of tier your data out as you need it uh, for different instances uh, for your software defined data center. And then we have, you know, our back type controls, users groups, things that are built directly into um, our operating system as a whole. Uh, one cool thing about our operating system is no matter what tab you're on, and I'll try to point this out in a few different tabs, is we keep, you know, very verbose logs inside the system. So whether you're in the networking tab or the virtual machines tab, or even if you wanted to kind of drill into just one of these uh, virtual machines here and get real granular in what you're able to do, you can notice that uh, there's still logs on a per virtual machine instance, kind of what's happening, snapshots, VM snapshots, starting, stopping, shutting down. Uh, we keep track of everything um, that happens inside of our system on a very, very verbose level. Um, some cool things that we can do is just kind of turn this guy on and show you a little bit how our backup system works um, and show you maybe just a little bit of speed of how quick a VM will boot up inside of our system. Uh, we run a full um, SSD demo system today. Um, they're Evo 850 um, laptop hard drives, so they're nothing real fancy inside of this, but you can see that it's very, very quick to go through and do things end to end inside of our system. So when we take a look at this and we take a look at some of the different snapshots, uh, we can go through and actually restore something from, let's say, oh, just a couple hours ago even. Uh, we can take just this snapshot here, uh, drill down into it, uh, import this snapshot, and go through and actually restore this. It'll take probably about 10, 15 seconds to go through and actually import this snapshot. Um, inside of the system, which is probably your longest wait for any operation that we have uh, for Verge OS. But once we have it in here, we can go through and actually view this. We can edit it and do some different operations to it. Uh, we can share it to another VM if we wanted to go through and share it to maybe a tenant or just another VM inside of our system. Um, but, but we can do your typical restore type operations as well. We can restore to new, we can restore to over a source if there's something already out there. Um, or we could just go through and just plain delete that snapshot. We didn't need it, not a big deal. So what we'll do is we'll restore this to new um, and we'll just call it, you know, Pat demo. Um, if you want, we can preserve the Mac address. If you're looking to replace exactly what your machine was uh, doing before, um, it's a nice little tool to have built in. Um, but you can see it took about one second. As soon as I could click that button as fast as I could, it would go through and actually restore this. We can power this virtual machine on and within just a few seconds, we can have a restored virtual machine inside of our operating system booting up and ready to go for use. Um, it's really fast. It's really neat. Um, we didn't have to restore from a tape. We didn't have to restore from another disparate system. It's all inherently built into our system, ready to go at any at a moment's notice when it's needed. Whether that VM was a terabyte or 10 terabytes, that's part of the um, power of our storage system it would take the same amount of time. It's instant. It's like a snap of a finger and you're done and ready to move on with the next operation. So we can go through and kind of take this to the next step outside of a virtual machine. We could take a look at what a tenant would be, which would house maybe multiple virtual machines, but consider it kind of your own containerized environment. It's kind of like a Russian nesting doll where, you know, in this platform here, we have just the main uh, tenant platform. And then when we move into a multi-tenant approach, if you're a managed service provider or looking to create your own private cloud, we can run a multi-tenant type of approach as well. So we can get into any one of these type of instances. And if we were to go and just view this, we can see that uh, they have 12 cores versus the 64 that we run in the um, uh, last platform that we were looking at. Uh, it's got 50 gigs of RAM. It's got its own snapshot. It's got its own external IP through the software-defined networking. Um, and it's got a, its own set of logs inside of here, too. So there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do um, inside of this when we go through and take a look. Um, and it's actually got its own UI that's different from the, the base configuration UI in this. So what we can do is we can actually log into this UI and notice that it's got its own set of virtual machines. It's got its own repository, software-defined networking. Um, it can be replicated to different sites that's also running Verge OS, um, and then different clusters and nodes as well. So you can see this is just a smaller subset, kind of like I said, that Russian nesting doll, you open it up. It's an exact replica of what you had, but just a little bit smaller. And you can continue to nest these. So if I wanted to go through and create a tenant 
inside of um, this WIT POC, I absolutely could. And I could go through and make as many tenants, as many levels deep as I needed to, as long as I had the resources, you know, the, the compute, the RAM, and the storage in order to continue to nest those into each other. Um, that way managed service providers could go through and resell inside of each other. They could go through and resell to other larger systems or subsystems. Um, it kind of gives you a, a, a bunch of different ways to go through and uh, create a multi-tenancy or a nested multi-tenancy type of approach um, inside of a, a hyper-converged infrastructure or private cloud infrastructure. So some really cool and neat things inside of here. Um, again, we're running our own disparate logging system inside of here. Uh, it has its own users and groups um, that is completely separate and segregated. Um, all the networks inside of here are going to be completely different um, than the networks that we see in this tab here. So if we wanted just to compare very quickly of all the different networks that we have for internals here, we can see that uh, we do have one WIT um, type of LAN um, on here. But if you go back here, we have WIT ECV new um, BK demo, and we have a few other um, type of VXLANs that uh, are only inside of this tenant because we're able to actually completely segregate this environment from the last environment that we were in, um, which is kind of that whole special sauce of why multi-tenancy is a, a big thing. You know, we can eliminate noisy neighbors this way uh, and we can go through and, you know, create our own defined private cloud infrastructure um, by just going through and giving us the ability to duplicate our software over and over again inside of these containers. A really neat approach is you can see I'm just going from tab to tab here. Um, if we went back into the um, host demo system that goes through and does all this, if we wanted to go through and get back into the, the tenants, uh, we can actually go through and we have a few different operations inside this tenant. Um, a, a really neat feature is let's say that this WIT POC was a HIPAA compliant data center. It was just a very vanilla data center, but it had all the firewall rules that you needed. It had all the ACLs that needed to be added in for the layer two and layer three switching. Um, it had some affinity rules built in for VMs and um, different aspects that you need in order to be HIPAA certified. Um, and it had all the infrastructure needed to go through and build a HIPAA compliant data center. Well, if that was the case, we could come in here, we could clone this and we could go through and just clone and call it whatever we want. We could create it as a new tenant if we wanted to. We could go through, um, and this will go through and delete all the logs and stats and snapshots. Um, so we're not duplicating all that. We're actually creating a new tenant. We were to check that box. Um, and then we can just go ahead and hit submit. And what we're doing at this point is, again, recreating all of the VPN rules, all of the firewall rules, all of the affinity rules in the hypervisor, any kind of storage that might be set up and ready to go, any kind of NAS components that are pre-configured. Uh, your security aspects, your backup and disaster recovery uh, retention policies, um, all the self-automated, self-healing and automation that we have built into that, that can all be copied instantly inside of our system and that basically just turned on like this and ready to go. And we created a data center that had, you know, 12 cores, 50 gigs of RAM on a couple of nodes here, and it's online ready to go. So there's no, no system that I know of um, outside of Verge OS um, that's able to give you a, a true multi-tenant approach to software-defined data center, but then give you the option to go through and copy it, replicate it, move it, and put it in places that you typically would not put a software-defined data center because we can start as small as two nodes, but we can also get as large as you know, thousands of nodes inside of the system as well. Uh, we do all of our own lifecycle management for all these different components. So there's no extra tools that you need to buy. Um, there's no specialty automation tool that you need to be um, certified in. And really end to end, it's a very, very easy system to use, get control of, and give you kind of an end to end experience with a software defined data center infrastructure. So kind of moving on to some of the other items inside of our system here, um, we can take a look at uh, what we're able to do for um, external networks. It's actually pretty neat. If we were to look at a new external network, we could give it a name, we could give it an HA group, we could uh, specify if it's a VXLAN, if it's a bond, if it's a VLAN that we need to import in. Um, we create all the MTU sizes on the fly, just like any other networking concept. Uh, we can choose clusters and failover clusters if you have a, a DR center uh, predefined. Uh, preferred nodes, uh, we only have two nodes because it is a demo system, but if you had 
hundreds of nodes or, or thousands of nodes or even different clusters for different operations, you could certainly come in here and, and pick those and, and put things in certain orders and be very uh, predefined in what you want to do. Um, a neat thing uh, as part of our layer three aspect, uh, we are able to actually um, have a ASN numbers assigned to us uh, from public uh, IP routers. Um, and we can actually do a BGP OSPF type failover operation on your network for your router. So we can actually start to facilitate some of your DR operations as a whole. So if you wanted to have a production system and then like a DR type of system, um, inside, we could go through and have a BGP router plugged into the back of us. We could have it plugged into a, a public switch, um, but we could actually take your whole ASN uh, block and actually route it over with a DR failover. That would happen for a set of tenants, a full environment, or maybe just certain aspects um, that need to be failed over when they need to be failed over. So our operating system does a lot. We have a lot of built-in features into this. And overall, uh, we can be that full end-to-end -end software defined data center for you with a single product versus you know, having a bunch of disparate software products out there that are complex to put in. Um, they have hyper, uh, they have HCL compatibility type lists that need to be abided by. Um, and you know, overall, they're very complicated and, um, and hard to use in, in some cases. So with something like us, we have all those features built in that you know those six plus products would have. Uh, we have all the different features that are needed to do your software defined data center to get you the basics down, get firewalls in place, uh, VPN concentrators put in, um, and we can really be that end to end solution um, that a lot of folks are looking for. We are that easy button, so to say, when it comes down to the software defined data center um, by reducing the complexity uh, and reducing you know the type of hardware. Um, and, and top of rack type switching that you would need to, to put something like this in place. So end to end, um, we are that single software defined data center um, available um, on the market today. Um, I know we have about uh, 15 minutes left um, inside of this, um, this environment. Uh, I know, do we wanna go through and maybe do a quick uh, question and answer uh, Carrie and Anand and see if there we have any questions out there, maybe unmute some lines and, and go that route. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I, I've shown just about everything that, uh, that I'd like to show for today. Yeah, nice job, Pat. I, I think we should just open it up for questions. I'm sure people have some and um, just kind of unmute and we're just going to open it up. So if anyone would like to go through and ask a, a question, uh, we got about 15 minutes left in the webinar. Uh, we'll go through and open it up for any questions that uh, you have around Cloud Fabrics, um, around Verge OS as a whole. Um, now would be the time to, to go through and do that. Yeah, so check it out. What do you think? So Patrick, what do you, what's the typical time frame for an implementation? I know that's a big, <laughs> you know, big question for you, but um, you know, if it's a departmental virtualization or if it's entire data center, maybe you can just kind of go through the time timing. Yeah, it really, yeah, I mean, especially nowadays, Carrie, that's a, it's a very loaded question, especially with hardware yeah. timelines and, and what you're looking to really accomplish. But I would say some of the most basic installs, if you have just a couple of nodes and you're really just getting started, um, as long as the nodes are rack stacked and cabled um, and we have an appropriate cable diagram of how things are interconnected for the, the switching, we can typically stand up a, a node or two in just a couple of hours as quickly as that we can get our ISOs um, put on site or transferred on site and the installation process itself. 
Um, if we have to kind of set up some networking and help customers walk through some of the more complex operations for top of rack switching, um, that moves into more of a, a few hours uh, to get a couple of nodes um, stood up. But really the neat thing about what we do from a Verge OS aspect is that, you know, once we have it installed on one node um, or a couple of nodes, uh, we go through and we install that operating system across all the different hard drives that are available in the system. And so as you bring up new nodes or add new nodes in that scale out type of operation, especially if you're using like an HCI type format, um, as you add more nodes um, to scale out your cluster operations, uh, we can pixie boot those. So there's no installs that actually have to happen after the initial install. We could pixie boot, run it dynamically in, into memory um, and very quickly scale out operations um, inside of data centers. Yeah, that's, that's great. It is, it is extraordinarily simple. Um, and I, you know, I, I like our, our marriage of our two technologies because, you know, we can, we can help map out Mm -hmm. the transition plan and then when it's time to implement it's quick right you know? so do the work up front to make sure you got the dependencies mapped out and you know all the details and just follow the plan yeah that's and that's really why we we love working with cloud fabrics as a whole is because there's very few if not any other applications out there that are going through and giving you a full dependency map of of what it's in a customer environment what it does for us, which is really neat and which it would do for other environments as well, is kind of reduce that complexity of what it takes to, you know, guess what's inside of a data center that you could possibly use or what's underutilized. And in some cases that we run into, what's overutilized, there's a switch that might have just a few things plugged into it, but it might be bombarded with too many packets or too much information at any given time. Um, and, it, and it may be, you know, a, a slow spot for your entire network. So trying to go through and plug more stuff into that could certainly hurt um, certain aspects of, you know, trying to go software defined or um, software defined storage and, and networking and so on and so forth, where you can see that the Verge OS isn't necessarily set up to find problems inside of your network. We're here to kind of streamline and, and solve some of that aspect of it, but you may have problems in your network that aren't even identified yet that Cloud Fabrics could really come in show you what some of those dependencies are. And so what some of those, um, some of those um, switching and sand components might be doing or compute components and identify problems that you didn't even know existed yet. Yeah. It's, it's really about preparedness and then, then implementation. So any other uh, comments or questions? We'd love to hear from you. If not, we can conclude and, you know, we'll have this available for you. Um, you can always reach out to Patrick or me and um, we'll get back to you if you have any questions, you know, as you sleep on it. All right. Yep. Everyone feel free to reach back out through um, any kind of emails that you have. We will send out a, re uh, a recorded version of this uh, to make sure that you guys all have a copy of that. If you want to go through and reference um, anything that we've said or anything um, that we've shown in the demo. Um, and then obviously more importantly, get a hold of uh, myself, uh, Carrie, Anand, uh, you got Lonnie Soulier here as well, Larry Mock. Uh, we can all help you and point you in the right direction for um, if you guys are trying to get started with some sort of software defined journey. All right, that'll conclude it. Thanks awesome. everyone. Thanks everyone. Appreciate your time. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.